Hello and welcome back. In this clip we'll have a go at creating our first auto scaling group. Since we've already set up a launch template, it's now time to use this template for creation of EC2 instances and let the auto scaling group manage that. So we're still in the EC2 dashboard and have to go to the bottom where we find auto scaling groups. The first thing we run into is a little explanation on minimum, maximum and desired capacity. The first two speak for themselves, I think. The minimum refers to the absolute minimum number of instances that should be running in the auto scaling group. And the maximum simply defines that there will be no more than this maximum number of running EC2 instances. Desired capacity needs a bit of explanation, maybe. First off, this desired capacity should be no less than the minimum and no more than the maximum. And when you create an auto scaling group, this desired capacity value determines the number of instances that will be started. After that, when scaling out and scaling in take place, the desired capacity will simply reflect the current number of running instances. So it's automatically adjusted after initiation of the auto scaling group. So if a scale out is needed, the desired capacity will automatically be adjusted as with scaling in. And of course, the creation of an auto scaling group requires a name and a template to start with. We call it demo ASG, and since we've only got one launch template with a single version, we can only pick that template. And somewhat further down the line, we'll create a second version. That means that we will also have to change the auto scaling group to use that latest version. In the next screen, we have the instance purchase options. We're going to accept the default since we want the template that we created to decide on the instance type, which was T2 Micro. Later, when we configure a spot fleet, we'll return to this screen and then have a look at these purchase options again. We'll use our production VPC and have to select a minimum of one subnet. But since we want to be highly available, we'll select two public subnets to be used for this group. We go to the next screen and now we can pick an existing load balancer or create a new one. But we're not going to do that right now, so we simply leave it to no load balancer. And not having a load balancer doesn't mean that health checking is not performed. The auto scaling group will do checking by itself, no matter what. Now by default, the first checks take place five minutes after an instance is started. In our testing environment, we think this takes too long, so we're going to set it to two minutes. Now here is where we can set our scaling limits. Let's set the minimum and desired capacity to two instances and the maximum to four. Now this is not a permanent setting. If you think that these settings are not what you really wanted, then you can always go back in and change them to whatever values you like. But here's the first important choice that has to do with scaling policies. We'll see more of this later, but this initial setting is a very important one that will help you determine when you want to scale out. This is called the target tracking policy and needs a metric type and target value. You can measure the CPU load, network packets in and out, and if you have a load balancer, you can decide to scale out when the request count per instance crosses a threshold. Let's use the CPU utilization metric and leave it to 50. This means that the auto scaling group will keep the average CPU utilization to 50% across the group. If the threshold is breached, a scale out will take place. In our situation, we know that the starting of this web server does not take five minutes, so we bring the warm-up time down to two minutes. So it will take part in the metrics calculations a bit quicker than the default of five. You can decide to only scale out and never scale in. We're not going to do that. More or less the same can be done for newly created instances to prevent them from being terminated. We simply keep the default settings and continue to the next page where well, we can set up SNS notifications, but we don't do that right now. We are going to tag this group, of course, like we'll tag everything. So the key will be demo and the value will be demo auto scaling group. Now we can review all of the settings and finally we can click create. So we created our first auto scaling group called demo ASG. And when we investigate and go to activity, we see that two instances have been started to live up to the desired capacity of two. And if we leave the auto scaling group screen and list our EC2 instances, we see that we've got two. Now let's open up one of them and copy the public IP address. We open up a new tab and try to access the web server of that particular instance. And since we have scripted with the user data part, we see that the index.html only shows us the instance ID of the virtual machine. And that makes us very happy. 
And just to make sure, let's check the second instance as well. So we copy the public IP address and try to access it from the browser again. And once more, we are successful, as it shows us the other instance ID. I hope you're still with me, because there's one more thing that we need to do. In the next clip, we will be testing things by generating some stress on the CPU load. And we need to install a tool to do that. Of course, we don't want to manually install that software on any of the instances. So we create a second version of the launch template and then make sure that the autoscaling group will start using that new version. As usual, we're in the EC2 dashboard and go to Launch Templates. We select our demo launch template and see that we've only got one version. Under Actions, we can initiate the creation of a new version. So let's do that. First, we give the new version a fully arbitrary description. And after we've done that, we scroll all the way down to the Advanced Details section because we need to modify the user data script. And we add two lines to our script. The first one will install the Amazon Linux Extra Packages repository that contains extra software which cannot be found in the basic OS repository. And then we use yum to install a tool called stress. And that's it. We do a check whether the second version is in place. And if I'm not mistaken, I will find two versions of the same template, one and two. And that's correct. Now, the last thing we have to do is make sure that the auto scaling group will use the new version of the same template. We open up the auto scaling group again and go to the launch template section. We edit that to change the template to version 2. And the auto scaling group is updated with the new version. Now in the next video, we will do some testing to see whether the auto scaling of instances works with regards to our demo auto scaling group.